Today's topic is all about ethics for self-publishers. If you've got five minutes, I've got five tips to help you to do the right thing when you're self-publishing. I think it's probably safe to say that most of us don't consciously think about ethics on a daily basis. And you may even be wondering about why I would be talking about ethics when it comes to publishing. But I think you also know that every once in a while you'll see something or you'll read something or you'll hear something and it doesn't seem quite right. You're not really sure what it is, but you think it's just not right. And the something that you see may be perfectly legal, but it just doesn't feel right. That's your internal ethical compass telling you to look more closely at an issue. The problem really is that when we ought to see something which is not quite right, often we don't, and self-publishing comes to mind. Now this is a topic which is really close to my heart because I started my writing career way back in the late 1980s uh, as a health and medical writer, as most of you know if you've been watching my channel for a long time which morphed into health and business writing, which morphed into eventually looking at fiction as well. But back in the day when I was writing about health, one of the topics that I wrote about a lot was ethics in health and medicine. And that all morphed into our, my interest in ethics in public relations and corporate communications. So this is an issue that I've written about a lot and that I've talked about a lot, made lots of presentations about. And when it came to understanding self-publishing and working through the self-publishing process myself, I realized that ethical issues were things that were going to make or break me as an ethical self-publisher. And I thought you might be interested in hearing some about this too. The truth is that Writers have been self-publishing for many years, you know, when you think about people like Mark Twain, Beatrix Potter, Virginia Woolf, all of them took steps to get their books published by doing it themselves. Virginia Woolf, in particular, created a publishing company with her husband in order to get one of her books published. So if you think about that, back then, self-publishing, publishing your own work was not considered to be a problem. But since those days, the image has been tarnished. And a lot of the reason why the image of self-publishing in indie writers has been tarnished is because of the unethical practices that have made their way into the whole process of self-publishing from beginning to end. So we really need to understand that the bad reputation that self-publishing often has is not entirely unjustified. So just a few key areas that if we focused on, we could all do our part to make self-publishing more ethical and to make each of us as individuals more ethical self-publishers. Here are my five tips. And some of the tips you're gonna to have to think about carefully because they're probably some of the things that you're interested in doing and you may not have thought about the ethical implications. Tip number one, do not write five-star reviews for crappy independently published books. Now I think you would be like me that it is beyond irritating to buy a book and find that it, 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 that it had five star reviews but yet it is riddled with typographical errors, grammatical errors, errors that should have been corrected in developmental editing, that it, the book is just a piece of crap but it has five star reviews. Some indie authors write reviews for other indie authors in the hopes that they will get five star reviews from those ones for their books tit for tat. This is not ethical. Just don't do it. Tip number two, don't ask friends and family to write glowing or any other kind of reviews for your books. Readers, potential readers who read reviews of your books and everybody else's books are interested in finding out what unbiased people have to say about your books. The fact is that your friends and your family can hardly be considered unbiased. First of all, most of them probably want you to succeed and in order for you to succeed they know you're going to have to have good reviews. Some of them might write the reviews and not even have read your book. This is something to think about because I think you're probably like every other writer when your family may be the last people who will read your book. It's hard for them to be honest, particularly if they don't like your book. And if they do like your book, it's, a, it's still a little bit difficult for readers to tease out the real reviews from the reviews from people who have the same last name as you do, or who at some stage they find out that they were friends who are writing. 
so just don't do it. Tip number three, never pay for a book review. Just don't do it, as tempting as it might be, and as many of opportunities that come your way, because people will post things on your Instagram account, will send you emails, and tell you that they'd be delighted to review your book. Anyone who sends you something like that, who's really delighted to review your book, is going to want to be paid. The truth is, it's not just independent authors who use this disingenuous practice. It's also traditionally published authors who are tempted to ask people to write reviews and they pay them for them. It is a cottage industry within publishing these days. The problem is that you're not going to get honest reviews and paying for reviews is just not right. Just don't do it if you want to be an ethical self-publisher. Tip number four, stop flooding the online bookstores with appallingly poor and ill-conceived books. There's another cottage industry that's grown up within the self-publishing industry, and that is the notion of writing a book about anything, all the time, just to generate income. As far as I'm concerned, this is one of the most insidious ways that the reputation of self-publishers and independent authors has been dragged through the mud over the years. Because this results in many of those ill-conceived and appallingly poor books. Unless you are a subject matter expert, step away from your computer and don't write that ebook. Tip number five, never overinflate your wonderfulness and success. I think this is one of the most problematic things in the self-publishing industry these days. Every time someone suggests to me that they are a best-selling author or an award-winning author, I want to look and see that they are on the New York Times bestseller list or they are on one of the other major ones in the major cities in the major news outlets. This is almost always not the case. And the truth is just because your book made it to number one on the, an Amazon subcategory of a subcategory of a subgenre does not make you a best-selling author. And you know, Amazon will actually put that up in the corner, number one bestseller. And even if Amazon puts it there, doesn't necessarily make it true. Yes, you were in one of those categories, but what you're really telling people is that your book is a bestseller, just like somebody who would be on the New York Times bestseller list, which is absolutely untrue. It is dishonest, it's disingenuous, it's a lie, basically. And I'm going to give you a link down below that will suggest to you to go to a particular article that might give you an idea about how you can even buy your way onto the real bestseller lists. Now these practices that I've just mentioned are the kinds of things that make many readers, book reviewers, librarians, all just a little bit skeptical about self-published books. You're probably well aware that most well-established book reviewers for well-established traditional media outlets won't touch self-published books and these are the reasons that they won't do it. So once we can get self-publishers to adhere to some kind of a mini code of ethics, then we'll have a chance to improve self-publishing's reputation. And by doing that, we'll elevate everybody's opportunities for success. Talk to you next time. Subscribe to Write, Fix, Repeat. And maybe I can help you improve your writing knowledge and skills. Five tips at a time.